When you have the dream of speaking English, there will be people saying, and you might even ask yourself, why are you doing this? You'll never get fluent. Stop wasting your time. So, so many of my students have struggled with this. When I was still in middle school or in high school, it was really hard for me because I was trying to learn English. I was like constantly doing something and a lot of my classmates didn't really understand me. They were like, why are you studying? Like you should go party and not study. And I just really liked it. They didn't understand me. And at first it really hurt me because I was a teenager. I was like, oh my God, I don't have any friends. No one understands me. But then when I moved to Moscow, I realized that like happiness is in my hands, right? I should do something about it. I shouldn't wait for other people to bring me joy or happiness or understand me. It's a scary decision to fight those voices, but Veronica Mark did, and today she's going to tell us how. Veronica, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> So Veronica from English with Veronica Mark is a language learner from Russia. In this video, we'll look at what makes a perfect, successful learner and the steps that she took to achieve native-like English fluency. I'm so happy to have Veronica on the show because here at Real Life English, we want you to achieve confident, fluent English. And that's why every week we create lessons so that you can understand fast spoken English, be understood by anyone and connect to the world. So make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any new lessons. Like Kaoya, who says that our lessons are helping them to get clear, confident English. Speaking English is extremely important for me, somewhat important for me, not very important for me. If you are here, I bet learning this language is something that you've always wanted or needed. You may have even been studying it for a long time, and when people ask you if you speak English, you answer, yeah, just a little, or I can understand, but I don't speak very well. Maybe you even apologize before you start speaking. Sorry for my bad English. You may be failing to do the number one step of starting something new. Take a look at what Veronica and I discussed here. If you learn English, you should understand why you want to learn English. Because I feel like a lot of students are really too hard on themselves, because, are being too hard on themselves because they feel like they need, to, they have to be advanced. If they're not advanced, they're like failures, you know, they're losers. And I don't think it's true because, for example, a lot of us don't really need English for work or for studying at a university, right? So it's okay if you're not advanced, right? If you only learn English to watch your favorite TV show, then you don't really need to be advanced for that, right? And But if uh, your goal is to actually work in an English-speaking country, then obviously you have to really uh, learn English. You have to dedicate a lot of time to the language. So my TED talk would be something like about like know your goal and then like, you know, pick a path that is right for you. Don't look at other people because you don't need to be advanced to watch like a video in English or to read a book in English if this is what you want to do, if this is your goal, yeah. right? Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I think everyone has to have a really strong burning desire for why they want to learn the language and that can really reflect. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, when you're very clear on what do you need the language for, that's also really good because it's like, okay, I, I, I need my English for work, but maybe you work as a doctor. So it's like, okay, you have to learn like a lot of medical English. You don't need to learn English about uh, the environment, for example. So it can kind of help you to choose like, I need to focus on this and I can at least right now ignore this. Maybe, maybe only like uh, the thing with like goals because it just helps me. Maybe like one of the people is also like me and they feel like they need a goal. They need to understand why they're learning a language and then it's going to be easier for them to learn English, for example. Because if, for example, you're watching this video and you feel like 
you don't really need to learn English to a very high level and you feel a lot of peer pressure because other people want to become advanced, right? It's like this goal that a lot of people have, I want to be advanced. But if you don't need to become advanced, it's totally fine, right? Just be yourself, understand what you need. Yeah. It's almost in that sense, enjoying the journey as well, because if you're not so focused on, I have mm -hmm. to speak English perfectly, or I have to be yeah. like these other exactly. people that I see who are are speaking perfect English in some sense, uh, then you're free to enjoy the journey, right? Yeah, exactly. You can really enjoy the journey. Yeah. So even if you know the reason why you're learning English and you are really focused on that, you may feel stuck sometimes. It seems like you reach a point in which you are not learning anything new. There's another important component that you should apply to take your English to the next level. It's what linguist Stephen Krashen calls comprehensible input. Now I asked Veronica about this and she illustrates Krashen's theory really well here. I feel like I read a lot and I also watch a lot of different TV shows and I, was, I obviously watch a lot of like YouTube videos. But recently I realized that I feel comfortable right now. Like with what I read and what I watch, I feel really comfortable. I feel like I understand like 100% of everything I'm consuming. And it's actually a bad thing because to improve, you need to like still have room of not understanding all right. of the information you're consuming. And recently I realized that I need to maybe watch something harder, like maybe a TED Talks, because they're usually a lot harder than just regular YouTube videos like about my everyday life. <laughs> yeah. And as for books, the same, because recently I've, I've tried reading the book called East of Eden. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was just so hard. And I was like, oh my God, like there are so many words I don't understand. And um, I don't know, I just kind of felt demotivated because for me, that book was definitely a little bit too hard. Right. So maybe like something in the middle mm -hmm. because right now I'm reading a book. It is good, I like it, but I feel like it's just way too easy for me. So maybe next time I'm gonna pick something a little bit more difficult. Yeah. East of Eden, that's a classic, I believe. So like those ones, even for me, sometimes there's like certain things that can be a challenge, you know, even for natives. So. Yeah, yeah, they are a challenge. <laughs> yeah. But that's that's really great. So you're always looking for things that um, they're kind of like on that edge of what you're comfortable with, right? Mm -hmm. To make sure that you're yeah, continuing yeah. to grow. So did you have something uh, besides just reading these graded readers? Did you have something that helped you to start acquiring the vocabulary that you needed to to get up to say native level literature yeah i had like a like a bullet journal <laughs> when i was in uh, high school mm -hmm. yeah and i would put down all the new words that i didn't know for me like back then it was it was good like it wasn't the best option but i memorized it all, a lot of words this way mm -hmm. but i also feel like what really helped me is not really putting down all of those words and kind of like memorizing them but just being really consistent and learning english every single day because every day i would just come across this word again and again and again and then i would just remember it this way mm -hmm. i guess yeah consistency is definitely key You'll only learn English if you study every day. That's right. That's crazy. Now this is a tricky question because there's no right or wrong answer. People's learning routines can be dramatically different. For example, you may have to study English in the morning because you work all day long, but another person may only have a few minutes in the evening because that's when their kids are sleeping. Or you may be someone who studies while commuting back and forth from school. But you can see how Veronica is living proof that being consistent makes the whole difference. You won't see the results immediately, but in the long term, you'll see how worthwhile it was to show up every single day. This quote summarizes it best. Uh, luck is basically showing up every day in some sense that, that uh, luck happens when you're showing up and, and then it's kind of like, you have a, a coincidence or something. Now, podcasts are a great and convenient way to create an English listening habit. Veronica mentioned that she does this every morning on her way to classes. For me, for example, uh, like every morning when I go to classes, I try to listen to a podcast in English. 
So my morning starts with English. Like during the day, obviously, I don't really have that much time and opportunity because I have classes and all of them are in Russian.、Mm-hmm. But when I come back home, I am like on a train. I try to again listen to something in English or read a book again in English. So this is for me like what I call a language environment. You can listen to the full interview with Veronica and tons of other English teachers and experts. For free, anywhere you enjoy listening to podcasts. However, I would recommend that you listen on the Real Life English app. Why? Because it is the only place where you can get a transcript for the full episode and learn all the most important vocabulary and more. Plus, many learners like you tell me that they are frustrated that they don't have anyone to practice what they are learning with. Well, on the Real Life app. You can have conversations in English with people from all around the world at the touch of a button, and discover new cultures. So if you are ready to step outside the classroom and live your English, then download the app now by searching for Real Life English in the Apple App or Google Play Store, or simply click the link up here or down in the description below. You don't need to obsess over grammar, but it can be your friend on this journey. I used to do grammar a lot because there was just a lot of grammar rules that I didn't know, I didn't understand, and I know that a lot of people don't really like doing grammar exercises. But for me, it was really helpful. For me, it was something that helped me improve because I, I'm like a really tactical person. I like knowing why a sentence is built a certain way. So for me, it was only rational to do grammar exercises, and I like them. I really like doing them. So I spend a lot of time doing grammar because for me it was really really important. And what do you think, like having that foundation of grammar, what benefits did that have to you later in your your English learning? I think for me、uh, it really helped me understand the structure of the language、mm-hmm. because when I was looking at a sentence, I wasn't. Thinking like why? Why are people using was here or like am or have? I already knew. I knew that this is like present simple or present continuous. Like I understood all of those patterns already. Yeah, and then I built upon them. I was like, okay, now I need more vocabulary. I need to learn way more words because this is something that's that was really important to me.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose like the. One of the points I, I would kind of like highlight there is that there's not necessarily any right way to learn, right? Because some people are、um, really big proponents of the not learning grammar at all. And I, I feel like in general, I found that more useful for me, for example, because I'm、mm-hmm. for me it's hard to <laughs> to do what you did, like going through the books and、yeah. everything, and I've, I've done it and everything. But I find that more useful later when I'm、um, in a point where I'm already listening to the language and speaking it a lot, and I understand it quite well to explain. What I'm already encountering, like so, I know like for my brain that works, that tends to work better. But for other people like you, it's kind of like you you enjoyed、yeah. the process and everything, right, of learning the grammar.、Yeah. So it's like really getting to know yourself, right, knowing what you enjoy, so that you can find、uh, what's going to work best for you. Has Veronica inspired your English learning journey? Then share it with a friend so more people can be inspired as well. Maybe you can help convince them to not give up. Now, I highly recommend that you start following these steps right away. To help you even more with that, check out this video packed with precious tips on how to become a confident English speaker. Let's watch a clip of that. I need to practice my speaking. I'm gonna try to find a speaking partner on the Real Life English app. Hi, I'm Andrea. Where are you speaking from? Uh, I, I, uh, I come from.、Uh... Well, it's Friday night and I have no plans. You know what? I'm gonna find someone to have a nice chat with. Hey, what's up? I'm Ethan from Barcelona. Where are you speaking from? Oh, what a small world! I'm Andrea and I'm also in Barcelona. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so I want to know what do you usually do on Friday night?、Um, I really like hanging out with my friends.